What's up everyone, welcome back to the studio. Today I'm going to be showing you a step-by-step -step guide on how to set up a gang sheet so you can order transfers from companies like TKO, Supercolor, Howard, and any other company out there that creates gang sheets so you can order the sheets, cut them up, and press them at home with your heat press. So without further delay, let's get right into it. So in today's demo, I'm going to be using Illustrator, which is my primary software that I use for almost everything along with Photoshop, but I'll also use Kittle to just show you how it can be done in Kittle. I'm not 100% versed in Kittle, so I can't go through any of the specifics, and I also don't have the paid plan, so there might be some features that I'm missing, but I did figure out how you can set up the sheet itself, so maybe I can get you to a point where you can kind of figure it out from your own. So let's go straight into Illustrator, and I'll show you how to set up the document and get the gang sheet set up. So here are a couple of examples of what a gang sheet looks like. This one's from Howard. It's a plastic sole gang sheet, and you can see that I have multiple designs onto one sheet so that I can cut it up and then use different parts for different projects. This is what it looks like when it's chopped up. So you just gotta basically use a cutter or scissors and just cut it out nicely so you can store it and use it for a future project. And this is an example of multiple designs. And I also like to use the full sheet sometimes. So I do my in the beginning Daryl's house design on a full sheet. Um, this brings the cost up a lot, but it's still cheaper and more effective than screen printing if you're doing small quantities. I just order like hundreds of these, so it makes sense in terms of price point but this is also an option where you can put one whole design on a gang sheet. So it just really depends on what your needs are. All right, so we're gonna be using Illustrator today. So first you wanna start a new document, open up the new document page. And depending on how big your sheet is, you have to size it here. You can change it later on, but it's just nice to have it set so you kind of know the dimensions that you're working in. And in order to find out the size, let's go to the site that you're gonna order the sheet from. So I'm gonna use TKO for example today. Let's do a TKO DTF order, for example. So we'll go to heat transfers, scroll to digital DTF. And then here we have some information about what's going on with the specs. And then we scroll down to get the gang sheet sizing. So we have 22 by 12, 22 by 24, 22 by 48, and so forth. So we know that the width is set to 22 and then the length can change depending on uh, what size gang sheet you wanna order. So here, I'm gonna just go with 22 by 24 because 22 by 12 might be a little too small. So in your new document panel, let's set the width to 24 and then the height to, what did I say it was gonna be? The height to 20, sorry, the width to 22, height to 24. And then important things to note is you want everything to be 300 DPI and you also want your document to be in CMYK because RGB is color coding for screen and CMYK is color coding for print. So when you print something, it's going to be in CMYK. So it's better to see the actual color representation versus RGB is going to be a little bit more saturated and brightened because it's backlit by a screen. So with that being said, let's open up the document with this, with these parameters. So you can see that this is a 22 by 24. So we have a lot of space to work with. And I'm going to just use this design, for example. So I have this statue design that I made a while back. Um, we have this right here. And then, because it's hard to see, I'm gonna add a black background so that uh, we can just see this a little, little bit better for the purpose of the demo. So we're gonna do 22 by 24, turn that into black, and then I'm just gonna center it. Okay. So here you can see that this takes up a lot of the space. So if you were to order this design, you're gonna have to pay pretty much the entire price for one design. So your unit cost is gonna be $31 to make this design. So obviously we don't want that because at that point you should probably just screen print or even DTG. So we're gonna change the dimensions because obviously I'm not gonna make this 14 by 22. That is way too big for a shirt. So I'm gonna size this at the width of 12.5. That's usually how wide I go on a front um, depending on the design. And on the back, I usually push it to around 14 inches. So it really depends on your design and how the proportions of the design look. You don't want things to go too far because when you wear something, it looks very different from when you're actually just looking at it on a mock-up. So what I always advise is get one of these, get a tape measure and measure it yourself because that's the only way you're gonna know how big you want a design to be. And if you're not sure how big to make something, grab a shirt that you like and just measure that graphic and then take that same measurement because you don't gotta reinvent the wheel if someone's already done it. So that's my advice. And I'm gonna show you one more tip where you can scale your artwork correctly to the size of the garment. So you're gonna have to do some manual work for this, but you're gonna basically get a picture of a shirt laid down flat on the ground. 
and then you're gonna put a ruler from chest to chest or from the collar to the end of the shirt or just anywhere on the shirt. It doesn't really matter, but it just helps to have an actual reference of the length or the width of the shirt. Essentially, what I call this is a scaled mock-up, meaning that the size of the mock-up is true to the size of the artwork that you create in the document because you have a ruler that tells you the size reference. So here is a XL LA Apparel shirt, and we have a ruler that goes from seam to seam um, I didn't take this picture. I would have done it from pit to pit, but you know, it's close enough. So it shows you that the width for this XL is 23 inches, right? So the beauty of this is now I can drag this over and then scale it and put it on the design. And then I can say, all right, this looks pretty good, right? And then what you're going to do is you're going to either take the width or the length. I like to take the length. So I'll bring it like this line it up to the bottom and then now you basically have the measurement of this artwork on the graphic file and that's really cool because otherwise you have to measure and figure it out in real life but here you, you got it done and here you can see that it's 18.5 in length and notice like the boundary goes past but the actual artwork starts here so make sure that the artwork is actually at the corner of the ruler and now you know your true size so this is 18.75 so in order to find the width we're just gonna go up here change this to 18.75 and then it says that the width is 12 so now we're gonna go here and then I'm gonna change this to 12 and then now it looks like I can fit two sheets almost or maybe I can't and if it doesn't you can try flipping it around and that looks like it could work so now by doubling your artwork you have reduced the cost of your print you brought it down by half now so this is like the advantage of a gang sheet is that the more things you can fit on one sheet, the less you're gonna pay per design essentially. So that's why most of my designs don't work for DTF because I'll be paying like 15 to 20 bucks a design, which doesn't make any sense. But if you want to create something where let's say we wanna have this design, but we also want another one, but we don't need it to be the same size. Let's say we wanna test something different, right? So we have this small here, and then we can duplicate it as much as we want. And that's the beauty of the gang sheet is you can just put as much stuff as you want as long as it fits. But just make sure that you have space because you're gonna be cutting this with a pair of scissors or a cutter. So if you're too close like this, you might run into cutting off some of the, the film. And it's just always good to account for the gap by giving yourself a little bit more space. So let's just say that this was the gang sheet that we wanna create. So I have another design here. I just want a front left vision that I can cut out and put it on a shirt for a sample. So this, let's just say this is at four inches, which is kind of big. So we'll bring it back to three. And then now I can duplicate all of this like this. And suddenly the one sheet is now justified for the price because I can create all these different shirts with just one sheet. And then the way you're gonna get this set up is you can keep the black background if you want. Um, some places will know to get rid of it, but I like to just remove it just in case. But for the sake of this tutorial, just so it's easier to see, I'm gonna keep it in there. So I was editing my video just now and I realized that I said something very incorrect about the background color. So what I was referring to was if you're creating a file that is vector-based, like let's say you can send an AI or PDF file, then it's okay if you keep the black background in that artboard file but the images itself still have to have the backgrounds removed or else they're going to print it as is and you're going to have like a black border or a white border so just make sure that whatever you save you get rid of that background but again if you're sending like a for example if i was doing a screen print transfer and i want to show that the text is white on a black background but i save it as a vector file then it's all good because with vector files the person in charge can go in and remove that layer but if it's a png that means you can't edit the image once it's exported so the PNG with a transparent background has to be submitted that way. And if you're going to do vector based art, then it might be okay, but just don't mess with the background, remove it when you can. And I just wanted to point that out. But what you're going to do is you're going to go to file, export, export for screens, and then you're going to export this artboard at 300 DPI or higher. And 300 DPI is the standard for printing. So if you do it any lower, you're gonna risk low resolution. You're gonna risk lines becoming blurry and it's just not gonna look good. So whenever you can work with the DPI that's over 300 and PPI DPI is the same thing. So if I say one or the other, it's 
talking about the same thing. So we're gonna export it at 300 PPI. And then now we should have the artboard somewhere. All right, got it here. Got the artboard here. So now this document is 300 DPI. And if you look at the dimensions, you can see that it's 6600 by 7200. So that gives you a pretty good idea that it's sized correctly. Like let's say for example, if I exported this at 72 DPI, if I did this at 72, which is the standard for screen, you're gonna see that the file size is gonna be significantly smaller. So you can see that's 1584 by 1728. And I can tell you immediately if I see something like this, like your artwork's not sized correctly. So just make sure that your artwork is at 300 DPI CMYK and you shouldn't have any problems with your artwork when you get it printed. Okay, and just for the sake of this tutorial, I'll just show you what it's like to order it. So again, I'm gonna use Tikio for the example of this, but we're gonna go to extreme color, DTF, full color, 22 by 24. And we're gonna upload that gang sheet that we just made. So the 300 DPI artboard is right here. And then hopefully everything is good. Um, for add art service, I always push no because I know my artwork's set up correctly, but if you are concerned about it, I'll just push yes. It does cost like 20 bucks or something, but it's always good to get your artwork checked before you get it printed. If you're not as experienced with print work, you know, it's just a w safeguard to save some money basically. And then print as is, I always push no. So as you can see, everything uploaded correctly and it shows me the price. So now it says it's 31 bucks for this thing. And if I do two or three, it doesn't change the price because DTF is typically based on the length of the roll versus like the number of rolls that you order. So that being said, uh, let's just go through Kittle. I'm gonna just make this clear, but I don't know a lot about Kittle. Like I just opened this today for the first time in like months. Um, I had the, the free trial for a little bit, but I didn't really use it. So now we're back to square one. So let's open up Kittle and let's try and recreate what we just did. So we're gonna go to units, inches, and again, very important, DPI, 300. Don't forget that. Height is gonna be 24 and then width is gonna be 22. Yes, just confirming. All right, so we're gonna create it. And now this artboard is scaled correctly. Let's see, I think we go to uploads. Um, all right, add new folder. And then I'm just gonna drag some stuff that I made. Does that work? All right, it looks like I actually got the elements to load up. So we're gonna make the artboard black again, just so it's easier to see. So we're gonna go to background color, black. Cool, we're gonna get rid of these that I put in here earlier. So the only difference is that I noticed there's no size here. Like it doesn't tell you what the length and the width is. So. I think that's one weakness that I've noticed is uh, in order for you to get the right sizing, it seems like you have to export the artwork at the size that you want it before you bring it into Kittle. So let's say that if I did do this correctly on Kittle, I would export the project at the DPI that I want, so 300, and then the size that I want. Let's say that I wanna make a project for the Vision Old English. So we want that to be three inches wide. So we're gonna go to pixels, 300 DPI, unit, unit inches, and then we're gonna go three width, and then uh, let's just say three by three to give us some extra space. So, okay, this is a way smaller artboard, right? And then now we're gonna go to layers. Let's get that background to be black so we can see it. And then I'm gonna drag in this once again. So we got the vision logo here, but clearly it doesn't fit, right? Because it's bigger. So we're, I wonder if I can make this, all right, cool. So we're gonna make this bigger. So what we're gonna do is we're going to shrink this and it doesn't change the, the proportions, which is good because sometimes you have to push shift or else it you know warps up the design. So at least here we know that this is a three inch document, right? So what you're gonna do is you're gonna go from edge to edge and then I don't know how to crop this, but let's just center this in view. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna export this as a PNG at 300 DPI. I have the free plan, so I can't do it at the settings that I want, it seems like. Or maybe I can do it, let's see. It downloaded something. Okay, cool, so it actually worked. Oh, make sure you get rid of the background because you want it to be transparent. So transparent background, download, artboard, cool. 
So I guess you would do remove background if you had the pro plan and if not, just do it on this transparent, but you do have this Kittle watermark. So I don't think it's gonna work, but let's just pretend that I have the paid plan. So now I'm gonna drag that file I downloaded and it seems like it didn't work. <laughs> it seems like uh, I can't export transparent if I don't have a pro plan. So maybe you do need a pro plan or maybe I just did it incorrectly, but if this was the this white block that you see, if this was the correct file, it, sh it now, because I exported it at three inches, it should come in like this, and then you shouldn't have to touch the sizing. And then all you gotta do is just move it around. I'm holding down Alt and I'm left clicking to drag, and that is usually like a duplicate shortcut for a lot of the design programs. So I usually just kind of mess around and push that. But basically now you have a bunch of these and you can kind of get your gang sheet set up. So similar to this, you would have to make sure that you are exporting it at the correct dimensions before bringing it in here, unless the pro plan does have the dimensions on the side, but on the free plan, it doesn't seem like it does. So that is one caveat that you're gonna have to work around, but it does seem like this works. So similar to the artwork, we're gonna do download. And then if you have the pro plan, you can download it at the right dimensions. And then you do the exact same thing, bring it into a TKO, super color, whatever you wanna use, and then just get your gang sheet made that way. So that's about it with the gang sheets. It's really not that hard once you get the hang of it, but depending on which tool you use, it could be easier, it could be harder, I'm not really sure. Obviously with Kittle, there are limitations. That's why I always recommend Illustrator because it is the industry standard and there's a lot more tutorials on Photoshop and Illustrator than Kittle that come from people who've been using it for years and years. So also from my own point of view, I do think the learning curve is a lot higher on the Adobe suite, but it is gonna be way more worth it once you get to the point that you can make whatever you want. So if you're gonna be doing this for a living, like I would say just invest the time and money into learning anything Adobe related because it is gonna pay off in the long run. So with that being said, thank you all for watching today's video. I hope you all learned something. And if you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. If you wanna support my brand further, I got my apparel, design pack, affiliate links, everything in the description box. So anything that sounds interesting to you, go check it out. And if not, it's all good. Thank you all for just coming through because that's what matters most to me. And yeah, thank you all for always joining me on this channel and I'll catch you all next time.